Right now, the world is seeing more displaced people than ever before. Refugees flee their homes when it's too dangerous to remain in their country. The uprooting and uncertainty can take a toll on physical and mental well-being. Today, I'm chatting with Chris Ann Alvarez, a refugee support staff member about how your mission and service gifts care for refugees. Mission and services, prioritizing refugees and allowing for a refugee program to exist, allowing for refugees to come here um, through the creation of this program, through the funding of the staff, um, through even allowing us to sign this agreement with the government these are huge. This means more lives being changed, more people being welcomed. How it works, refugee sponsorship works, at least through the United Church of Canada primarily, is there are congregations who form sponsorship groups who either one of three ways, they are approached by someone either in the congregation or the community who have a family member they would like to sponsor or um, a stranger that they come to know you either through a refugee program like the blended visa office referred program um, lgbtq um, programs um, and these people come together and they sponsor um, the refugee it, it might take, it will take years for the most part, unless they're expedited for one reason or another. Um, but what the Mission Services Fund allows is for this program to exist and for the United Church to sponsor within their own congregations. Otherwise, what would happen is these congregations would be knocking on other sponsorship agreement holder doors. Mm -hmm. You spoke of lives changed and... Mm -hmm. It struck me because my own congregation has welcomed refugees before that oh. it's not it's not just the life of the refugee that's changed. No. Um, but the congregation and the yes. community. I wondered if you might be able to share some stories about the ways in which lives have been changed through mission and service. Yes, I can. Um when I started at the United Church of Canada, um it was in the midst of COVID and I interviewed, um, we have a group, it's called the uh, Refugee Advisory Group. Um, it's one regional representative uh, who works alongside the refugee desk of the GCO. And I was so fortunate being able to hear their story, mm -hmm. stories. And I was so humble because a lot of them have been doing this longer than I've been alive. And it's amazing to even ask them, why are you still doing this? Because it's not easy. Mm -hmm. um, it's easy to get burned, burnt out. That's the number one thing, of course. And they're doing it on a volunteer base. So the stories I have to share are stories mostly that are theirs. Mm -hmm. um, so there's this one of our uh, refugee advisory group members, our representatives, um, when I asked him, he just had a huge smile on his face and he told me, uh, it was actually my wife's idea. Um, our basement was flooded. Um, we renovated it. It, re it kind of became this like basement apartment suite. And their first thought was, why don't we sponsor a refugee and he can live here? And who thinks like that, right? And it was just beautiful. Mm -hmm. So that was, I think, their first foray into the refugee program. Um, they sponsored, they looked through the list. I think it was a blended visa referred um, gentleman that they sponsored. Um, they looked through the list and they, they chose him. Um, and he, he did live with them in their basement. And um and it's been years since, and they really looked to him as, as their son, as their adopted son. He's since caught and married. Um, he's moved to a different city. And he and his wife, um, the, the sponsor, um, 
who's also the, the RAG member, um, drove him to move. They also welcomed um, his wife when she, his wife Reggie arrived. They toured her around the area. Um, that's just an example of someone opening their homes, their home and their heart and yeah. allowing themselves to be transformed and allowing their family life to be transformed. I was very touched by this story. He actually, um, when he, the sponsor had told me, he told me, I have no kids. Um, and this was an unexpected blessing. Um, yeah, so that's, that's one of the very many stories I was very fortunate in hearing. Chrisanne, I wondered how, if you could tell me how you respond to people who are concerned about the impact of refugees on the workforce or the education system or, or health care. Educate yourself on um, what a refugee is, first and foremost, because that definition gets very confused with migrants. And a migrant and a refugee are not the same thing. As I've said earlier, um, you know, economic migrants, um, those who, those are completely different um, definitions, but also programs that the government has. So you have to be a very specific, um, you have to fall under a very specific set of criteria to be a refugee. And you go through very stringent um, security clearances in order to even make it here. And that's why the wait is so long for them. I mean, we're looking at least two years and I'm sure sponsors are listening to this and laughing because they've been waiting for four years um, mm -hmm. or longer, right? So, mm -hmm. um, and they enrich Canada in, in ways that are, um, you know, it, when ways are so beautiful, I mean, you see, um, them going to, as I said earlier, places that are rural and starting mm -hmm. businesses, um, bringing their culture, bringing, um, just depth and richness and what a poverty for us if we were to, to be close-minded, <laughs> Tell me, Chrisanne, about the ways that refugees contribute and enrich our communities. In so many ways, they start businesses, um, they fill job gaps, but they also take on jobs um, where they're able to contribute in meaningful ways through their culture as well, that they're so generous in sharing with us. Um, in the way that they break bread with us, they welcome us into their homes. If you've, I, you've said that you've sponsored before or your congregation has, mm -hmm. um, I don't know if you've experienced that sort of that welcome, welcoming um, yeah. mm -hmm, of, of them just inviting you over and, and having food ready for you. And, mm -hmm. I, have, I have. I feel like I'm, we're, we're sort of godparents to a number of the kids that have been born here in Canada since they came Beautiful. which which church is it just uh the church that I was serving for 10 years was Windermere United uh, Windermere okay and who yeah. were you sponsoring primarily well, or from so it's a funny thing actually so there's there's Syrians that we sponsored officially and then um the la nine years ago we welcomed a family of refugees into our church in sanctuary for a year and a half mm. a Roma family that were uh, almost deported um and uh, so we had uh, the privilege, uh, the joy and the pain of, of living with them for a year and a half as they sought to, to remain in Canada. Um, mm -hmm. And since then, there's just been, I'm part of uh, a number of ecumenical and interfaith refugee groups. And, uh, and of course, among that group are many of us born in Canada and born abroad who, who live and work together and as you said, break bread and you know, wipe tears of joy and laughter and uh, and live um, to see the 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 gift that is the divinity in each one of us. And we would be poor for for not having uh, having met and lived and worked together.
If someone wants to get involved with the refugee work that we do at the United Church of Canada, what would you suggest? There's a few ways you can get involved, of course. Um, one of the main ways is donating to the MNS Fund. Um, but if you wanted to get involved directly, so inquiring if your congregation is sponsoring or um, willing to undertake a sponsorship, um, but also offering to help congregations that already are. Everyone has a gift um, uh, that they can offer. It could be something that you specialize in. It, it doesn't even have to be. Maybe you have an eye for decor and you uh, really want to help set up the house, right? Mm. So you can really help in big and small ways. You, you know, babysitting or tutoring, those kinds of things. Those are things that we don't really think about. A lot of people do rally together when the refugees arriving, but when they do arrive, offering to take them skating or donating mm -hmm. um, a skate pass or uh, a, a day pass for a day. Those are the, those memories, those things uh, do make a big impact. Just yeah. offering to be, just being there, just offering yourself. I'm reminded of Christ saying that, you know, to see Christ in the other uh, you've spoken about the ways that each one of us has a gift, the, the the newcomer, the Canadian that's been here for their whole lives. Um, and you've been a gift to us today. Thank you, Chrisanne, for sharing stories and the importance of the work that we are collectively doing as a church through mission and service and for the gift that we are both sharing in and receiving in, in the welcome of newcomers. Really appreciate talking to you today. Thank you. Your gift for mission and service will help to continue refugee program staffing.